Hi everyone. Yeah. Nice. Uh, uh, I have about twenty years experience. Uh, yeah, but I always opt for some break uh, between you know uh, projects. So uh, I've been traveling the world. Look at um quite a numbers uh, of projects uh, by the past masters. Yeah, and of course today there are two masters that I will discuss today by the two students. Uh, they are my favorites. Uh. Okay, uh, I'll, without further delay, I'll just present what I think. Uh, but basically what I think right, is um, also I was taught by one of my lecturers who uh, graduated from AA. Right? He has a different thought process. Yeah, I find that that thought process is uh, uh, very useful. And I hope you, know, uh, you can understand uh, there's another way to look at uh, architecture product. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. This is about social housing Singapore uh, in Singapore context. So this is a third process. So from the left, right, you can see uh, uh, the third process is, okay, in Singapore, right, there is a condition because when Singapore set up the right, it's a, at least the condition, it means that that is where is the issue and where is the, that's the needs, yeah. So from this context, right, we move on, you know, what is the intention, you know, uh, from all these issues, the needs and, then what is the aspiration, what's the idea, how you build, you know, what is the ingredient uh, for the dish. And then, of course, the product itself, you know, is the architecture, the building. That is a solution to the condition and the needs and the problem. So this is a model that I have been using in all my design. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the needs and the issue right, in Singapore, right, the context has two main things. The first thing is the land. Itself is an island stage and that is very limited. And then in terms of the land and the natural resources. So uh, the population that has been inspired as a part of a management because the population itself, it means that that is the only way can thrive Singapore. And then of course, with this limited uh, land and everything, uh, Singapore have no choice to go for high growth. And then in order to be competitive in the international markets, Right. It has to be go for high skill and then very intensive and effective economic approach. With this context, right, no choice, Singapore has to move on for high density development. Yeah. And then in order to move forward right, in the long term, right, it has to be sustainable. It means that it has to be balanced in terms of economic, social, and environment. Yeah. And also because of this limitation, right, Singapore has to make sure that it's resilience. It means that you have to protect whatever you have in order to make the most out of what you have protect. Because when we're talking about investing in uh, the long-term growth, right, you really have to, first thing is security and protection, yeah. And then in order to achieve this, right, you cannot put all the eggs in one basket, yeah. It has to decentralize. And then earlier days, right, the Singapore right, is from one corner and then spread out with the, all the satellite and mixed development. So the product, right, you can see right, the aspiration of the planning and the architecture right, is always high rises, masses. And then in terms of the balance in sustainable growth, it has to go for garden city. And then because of resilience, right, it has to go for satellite mixed development. And of course, in order to connect all this for very, very high effective economic model, it has to really go for very, very good uh, public transportation. And then let's look at let, let's look at the contemporarily, right? Uh, contemporarily, right? Example we have is uh, Hong Kong Manhattan. Uh. Of course, in terms of architecture and history, I uh, like Wendy and uh, so when yeah, to talk about the other one. Uh, my favorite is Habitat by Lee Corbusier and the Casa Mila by Gordi, uh, Antonio Gordi. Yeah. So let's say we look at the near one, Singapore itself, you can see. Uh, Okay, it's an island state of, with a central area, right? It's the natural resources. You can see the red bubble, right? And then all the satellite city, right? You have the Congo at the northwest, uh, northeast, and then you have the airport at the very far uh, uh, right-hand side, you know, where you can see, you know, Changi Beach Park, all this, yeah. And then it come to the Marina Bay at the south, right? That you can see the Suntosa, this thing, right? This is at their commercial center. It's become the heart itself. And then and the, and the, the other side, you have uh, Tuas, you know, at the left-hand side, you have the Tuas, the Singapore Discovery Center. These are more the commercial, no, more the scientific and industrial uh, development. 
So because Singapore naturally also because in the central right, is the catchment area. So they will keep this catchment area right is for uh, basically it is for their water, the green lungs, and then it of course is to avoid is for the flood con uh, control. Then let's see, you see, uh, if you see the Hong Kong, Hong Kong is the same. But Hong Kong is different because it's spilled out to be a lot of small islands around it. And then the city is by nature also close to water. You can see that the, the Hong Kong is very dense at the Hong Kong in the central area. And then of course, the, because the naturally the hillside right, is at the, both the other end and then it becomes a natural park itself. And then it becomes you know, the flood controls so that the flood, the water will not, when it rains, you know, flood down to the city. Yeah. Of course, the others, right, uh, it will become uh, uh, as double up as a recreation uh, and the green lungs. So when we look at Manhattan, it's the same case. Manhattan is actually an island itself. And then Manhattan, right, it's just because the land is quite flat and then they keep the central park, right, it's called central park. Yeah, you can see this green lung in the red box. Uh, it also become a buffer, yeah. And then it will create a uh, double up as a recreation and the lungs, yeah. So basically, uh, Manhattan, uh, Manhattan, this central park, right? You will see there's a big lake in the middle. See the whole world, right? When we talk about high effective economic growth, right? Um, especially with a limited uh, area, they always go for high rises, no choice, yeah. Very natural, yeah. And then what about? What about in this process of urbanization? Uh, what, what has Singapore you know, gone through in terms of their urban how, uh, social housing? Let's go to the slide number three. Yeah? In this, right, you can see Singapore started from the 60s after it had been independent from so called Malaysia. Uh, yeah, it has started its own uh, city state. So that time, right, you have to really house all the people, you know, move people from a kampong house. And then you look at, you know, from 60s to 80s, right? Basically, Singapore public housing, right? Or we call it social housing. It is actually to house the people, move people from kampong house, move them into apartment blocks, yeah. So this kind of apartment blocks, right, you can see, yeah, they are pretty low. Floor to floor high, yeah, it's very low. And then the window and the door is very small. And then, of course, the most effect, yeah, efficient, right, is to put a corridor at the outside and then you move people. And... This basically in the old days, uh, it's basically most of them, they have two rooms or one room. Yeah. And then the hall itself, they call another room. So uh, in this kind of types, right, they were pretty uh, basic and functional. And of course, it's a stack of all the boxes and identical. And then moving on to the 80s, uh, the people are feel more affluent. Uh, so they, have, uh, they don't have to worry about uh, food and everything. And then they are more for comfort. You can see this kind of apartment blocks. Uh, they have become more high rises. Yeah. And then, but sure, you see the window is still small. And then without balcony uh, for Singapore, the public housing. And the blocks and blocks, you can see very easy to identify because it's deal with planning. You can see the name and the number on the blocks itself. And you see, then the, this is the first, first phase. It's a pine point block, then high rises and then mix of uh, point blocks and the uh, horizontal boxes there. In the phase two, right, all these simple boxes, right, they have uh, been uh, giving another choices to upgrade further. So the upgrade will be in terms of material. So there will be a phase where right, you can choose uh, not to have a, uh, furniture, not to have uh, the, the kitchen cabinetry, don't have uh, the, the sink and the uh, toilet bowls. The material is empty. You can choose to install yourself or you can choose a package from the HDB flat. Yeah. So, and later on stage, right, then people, uh, you know, they have more comfortable and then also these boxes, right, they are actually given the chance to upgrade with lift. Because earlier days, right, you see, right, all these at the left-hand side, yeah, all these units, right, they have to only have a pair of staircase, front and back. So people have to really walk that far and up the floor. So, Singapore, the government, they decided, you know, to upgrade with uh, the lift, you know, mechanical lift, you know, with a pair so that they can move faster. And then also you can see, right, these photos, right, they've been covered with all the walkways, all the way connect to bus stop. So at the below, right, you can see the, the staircase, right, and then you walk down to the bus stops. So 
every this kind of satellite, so-called city and blocks and blocks, right? About every, um, uh, I can say that about uh, every uh, four, five hundred, right? You have one bus stop. Yeah. And then people are very comfortable. You have no complaint, you know, because people will complain how they can move more efficient. So this, right, they, they let the passengers, right, go and move across the other side, you know, with uh, this crossover. And then in the later stage, right, this co crossover, right, especially at more bigger city, right, uh, so-called uh, suburban city, uh, they be installed with lift or escalator. Depends uh, the logistic of the, of the blocks, yeah. And then, of course, at the ground floor, you can see, uh, at the ground floor, let me see. At the ground floor of this, right, if you can see, most of the blocks at the end of the 80s and start of the 90s, uh, all these blocks at the ground floor, right, they don't have a unit, so they call it as a void deck. It means that people can organize, you know, social function like funeral, birthday, or social gathering, or all people can come down to the ground floor and have a uh, chit chat with their friends, uh. Yeah, and Singapore, you see this uh, this stage of uh, apartment, right? Is the window is still quite small, and then you can see, yeah. Uh, so this is Singapore HDB flat, right? Uh, when they start, it's just purely HDB flat at the left hand side. This one, this model, and then they move up to executive condos. Basically, there is still a HDB flat, but with bigger windows, yeah, bigger windows, but still have no balcony, yeah. And then from there on, right, they give you the choice. If you want to have a better quality one, then it means that people have to go for uh, private condos. Uh. Yeah. But this is the basic concept until today that's still keeping in this principle. And then from here, right, uh, now from about millennium until this 20, right, uh, Pinnacle, I know that uh, y'all earlier on, y'all want to study uh, Pinnacle. So Pinnacle right, has been. Um, a benchmark for the latest model of HDB flat, especially in the city center. Because Pinnacle actually basically is nearby the Chinatown. So you can see the Chinatown here at the right hand side, yeah, all those high rise blocks. Yeah. And then Pinnacle were at this uh, very prime location, right? Is expire, you know, like just same like um this Marina Bay Sand, you know, move all this facility right up the blocks, yeah. So you will have a sky garden, uh, you know, uh, every 20 floors like that, yeah. And then you have a uh, connecting all the different blocks, you know, for convenience and for facility. And then at the podium, right, usually there is, I've been there before, uh, you will have a lot of facilities. The facility, it can be kindergarten, it can be elderly, it can be retailed in all these blocks. But in uh, this pinnacle, they have all these facilities. Basically, they accumulate everything else in one block. Yeah. And there's one more model from here, right? Um, there's another model in all these blocks, right? Boxes, uh, uh, and blocks, right? Usually they set uh, they select a so-called uh, satellite center. Example, Pongo, Amokyo, Bisan, all these. So especially in a new one like Pongo, right? If you say in the future you all have chance, uh, yeah, yeah, you can just come for a look. Uh, it means that when you reach a uh, so-called city center, right, that is an MRT spot, a uh, big hub, and then there's also a bus interchange. And then usually come with uh, shopping malls and food court and hawker center. Yeah, then from there on, right, you will have dispersed of all the HDB blocks. Yeah. And then in they may be in the commercial, like the shopping malls, right? Sometime next to the commercial or even inside the commercial, partly, right, there will be even a uh, library. But in the latest, latest model in Bedok, right, Tampines, all this, uh, there are uh, basically, the example, you know, uh, they have uh, sports uh, halls. The, the sport halls are combined with uh, all the uh, authority matters like CPF, you know, government sectors. They will have a representative office in this center. So basically, it becomes a, a, a mini city by itself. Okay, so I will give you a video uh, of a glimpse of how a typical uh, HDB blocks are in the 80s, because that is actually the bulk of the whole uh, HDB flats in the whole market. Yeah, it's about 80%. Let me share with you. Uh. Come on, uh. A bit fast, uh, you can see all the small windows, basketball court, and then the ground floor, right? 
it's a call avoid that. Yeah. And then with all the clothes hanging, quite monotonous. Uh. And then sun shading was added later on. And then, yeah. So this last part, right? This is so called, you know, like the, all the cover walkway, and then people can sit at this kind of uh, shaded uh, small building. Yeah. So um, at the same time, they try to have some plants, you know, to green it. And it's one good thing about it is uh, it's, it's quite quiet. Lah. And also they are very, very uh, vigilant in terms of uh, security. They have camera installed in all corners, um, especially certain corners uh, went in and out from the community. Uh. Yeah, you can see this one also another, uh, okay, it's a void deck. Yeah. So all the elderly or whoever can come for a gathering here. Yeah. But there's no barbecue pit, all this, yeah, and swimming pool. Those will be have to go for a uh, private residential. Okay, so I will say that that's all my sharing. Any question? Uh, hi, Mr. Jojo. Uh, this is Jun. Uh, I have a question to ask is, I'm wondering in Malaysia, most of our high-rise building, the ground level mm. is always enclosed with the fences, which normally they don't allow the public to passing by the building. But we idealize that uh, the, the highest building in Singapore, they always allows the people to passing by the ground floor, which there's no any fences surrounded the building. Is it? Is that? Is the yeah, policy because, by the government? No, you can see from the, you can see from the video that there's no fence at all. Yeah. A fence is only for condo. Yeah, public housing, they don't allow to have a uh, fence. They try to adopt, basically, actually, is inspired by the garden cities. Uh. Yeah, Singapore overall, the planning is inspired by garden city. And then garden city, the concept actually come from Kobo. Li Kobo Zia. Oh. Yeah, so... but, and, uh, yeah, but earlier version, that if you want to uh, understand further, right, you should go along the garden city concept, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting to hear about it. So basically, this only apply to the to the uh, normal social housing, but not towards the apartment, right? Ah, no, apartment it means that it's social housing. Uh, private housing they call it condos. Oh, con <laughs> oh I see. Uh, more, uh, 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 more exclusive uh, condos. Mm, yeah. All right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Because like usual, like, you know, uh, people pay more, right? So they want to have a more control because inside they have facility like swimming pool. They don't want people, you know, anyhow to come to the swimming pool. Yeah, I think it's quite good in a sense because I have been to Singapore around two years ago before pandemic. So I was so quite impressed that especially those kind of uh, uh mm. social housing they allow the people directly passing by the building so your way is a uh, quite good for me lah for the public i don't need to walk around the pedestrian mm. walkway i can directly use the building as a shortcut so uh yeah. yes yes that is supposed the idea yeah uh but i for me personally i feel that you know they have not done enough because the ground floor right uh mm. Every inch, you know, Singapore also count one, you know. So uh, the building itself, right, floor to floor high, right, for me, it's not enough. Uh, a very important one, you note, right, especially even during the 80s and 90s, uh, the blocks, right, the floor to floor height is only about uh, 2.6 2, 2. meters. Oh. And then for the old blocks, right, it's only 2.4. So the door to door height, uh, finish, uh, is only 2 meters. It's very quite depressing, you know, live in this kind of blocks, yeah. And then, yeah, uh, you yourself, have you, uh, Jun, have you yourself live in a HDB flat? Um, I remember my cousin is staying in HDB close to Woodland. I forgot the name, but it's, she, she's staying at, at Woodland area. Yeah, but it's a HDB housing, so that's why. You I yourself, visit. you visit her? Uh, yeah. It's a How do you feel? Uh, I think the building is not during 18th century so because 
the ceiling is not that low as you mentioned, two point something. I think the ceiling still have like three point meter, three point zero something meter. Lah. Still quite Are you sure? spacious. Are you sure in HDB flat? Hmm. I remember my relative told me it's a it's a HDB and I didn't ask in detail yet. Okay, look at your room. Uh. Your room, yeah. uh, your door is 2.1, right? Your ceiling height, how much? About three. Are you sure? Ceiling height, you know? Maybe around 2.6. <laughs> <laughs> the most, I think, is 2.8. The most, the most. <laughs> well, I remember I would, there, I there think... are also other uh, HDB built in the 80s and 90s. Uh. I visited a few because I, I used to visit my mm. seniors uh, during my summer holidays from Australia. Uh, I stayed in a few of them. Actually, I went to visit them and, and, and stayed in two of them. And yeah. I remember visiting one friend. His grandfather's uh, HDB flat was really old one. Uh, like you said, that could yeah. be very low. Uh, mm. In Yo Chu Kang area. Yo Chu Kang or Chong ah. Kang area. Those, okay. those are the old, older ones. His, his, okay. his, his grandfather stayed there. Lah. So I was mm. visiting him and then his parents were in UK. So he himself only back in Singapore for the holiday, summer holiday. And then I stayed okay. with another senior uh, in, in Bedok. Mm. That one is a walk-up. It's a five-story. Five-story walk-up. Oh. But I think oh, the city is, a... is not that bad. The city is not... I can remember, I think, you go in, there's a living, dining and... Some kind of open plan living dining uh space. Uh, uh ceiling is not not that not that slow as you mentioned. Uh. Uh, he lives in Tiong Baru or not? Tiong Baru is special case. Uh. There's a one uh, area that is a uh, special case is Tiong Baru. Very hip now, yeah. Mm. Uh those those so-called Atas uh, HDB flat like, very, uh, in the, I think in the four, uh, in the 50s one, 50, 60. Yeah. Those are big. Those are unique also big. But average, uh, average, right, is uh, the, uh, the door size, right? Because I, I did go and measure. The door size is two meter high, yeah. Because I was wondering, you know, how, how it works, you know, for such a low ceiling. Because I live in one of the unit that is about, uh, 2.5 height, yeah, ceiling height 2.5. So I was wondering, hey, how come measure down? Oh, hey, the door is actually two meter. So it's yeah. custom made to two meter. Yeah. So is the is HDB going to like are they redeveloping some of the older HDB flats or not? Like they are relocating them or they are relocating them to uh, other HDB estate and then redeveloping some of the HDB flats. Like some location. Yeah. Are I, I presume there are some locations are quite prime, right? Yes, they do. They do. So you can see a HD flat, right? Sometimes like, you, if you walk around, uh, you see how come they have a one green patch of area. Those are actually live, purposely live it as um, empty. Then later on can be upgraded to something. And then while the surrounding of this empty patch, right? They are actually, you know, meant for developer to recruit them. They call it en bloc, right? Uh. So M block, it means that later on, the Apple can actually ask the resident, you know, hey, you want to sell your blocks or not all this, you know, and then government, you know, then government actually will type with all these developer, right, to buy it over the land and then compensate the people and then redevelop. Okay, another question is, uh, um, can you buy and sell HDB flats freely or you have to go through HDB board? Uh, you have still have to oh, okay because they somehow they control they manage, manage to control the pricing right otherwise the price would have gone yes. up very high already. Yes, yes, it still have to back to HDB like, in a way, and then so especially can you explain yeah. a bit more on this mechanism? I think that is the the unique part of HDB that they manage to control the pricing in Singapore for public housing compared to Hong Kong. This mm. price is considered very very cheap. Uh. Hong Kong, you, you cannot talk, mm. talk about 400,000 kind of sing dollar. And Hong Kong, easily a few million, you know, for a, a small flat. So oh, I think oh. the, the mechanism mm. in Singapore, in HDB, that is the success, uh, not just the, the physical planning. Can you explain a bit more, like, if I okay. if we get a PR, I want to buy HDB, how, 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 how does it, how do you go about? Okay, 
PR you cannot buy HDB. PR cannot buy. <laughs> okay, oh. PR in the 80s, 90s, you can. Oh, okay. Okay, after the millennium, PR cannot buy. Okay, so they force yeah, you to so convert to citizen. Exactly, yeah. So okay. only become citizen, you can buy. And then citizen also, if you are single, you cannot buy until you are 35. And then if you are 35, right, you only can buy those that uh, uh, we sell. Lah. It means that it's from the market. So it means market, it means somebody have, have stayed before, have stayed even more than five years, then somebody can sell it to you. And then even somebody that somebody, uh, your, your two of you, you strike your, your, your whatever, the process have still have to go through HDB. So yeah. that means it's, or, a, it's a free price. I mean, I, if I buy at 450,000, some yeah. somebody offer five hundred fifty. Can I? I can yeah. let go at five five hundred fifty. Yes. Oh, but I, you must be qualified. Uh, the buyer must be a citizen. Must yes. be married. Uh. Yes. Uh, okay. must be at, at least you single lah uh, over thirty five lah. Then oh, okay. if you want to, if you first time buying, you want to get the benefit uh, that, that you have to go through HDB because you want to get the subsidize. What is yeah. the subsidize? Want, what, what is the subsidy? Subsidy is you see uh, your subsidies right they will give you uh maybe like uh, uh let's say you you want to buy from a location near your parents you have uh 10 12 thousand depends on the category that's very complicated to calculate because I don't know I don't really deal in this kind of thing because I know I'm not eligible okay, okay. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then uh I, you if you want to have uh two savings share and then there's another subsidy uh, subsidies. Okay, uh, if you're not, you know, all this you don't want, you don't care, you know, uh, but usually people will take up that, yeah. Uh, then you will have to go through and get the loan from HDB. Remember, uh, can get a loan from HDB, yeah? the bank itself, or you want to get a different a bank rate outside, uh, then you will not tie back to the subsidy. Uh, subsidy. So that means uh, HDB owners, they actually sell their unit to open market, but the buyer must be a qualified buyer. Like cannot be like a foreigner. Yes. It cannot be a Malaysian yes. in Singapore. Uh, yes. but who, who, who has the money to pay, but he, the bank he yes. himself also is not qualified. Like the buyer, he quali the buyer must be a qualified person under the HDB yes. purchases guideline. So sort of that criteria only he, he or she can buy. But, yes. but owners can actually sell it in the in the open market. Can sell in the mobile market, you can get uh, through agent, but okay. end of the day, your paperwork all has still have to process through HDB and be approved. Okay. okay. But then how, how do they manage to control the pricing? Because uh, some of the HDB flats location are quite good, even though secondhand. But how do they manage to control within like less than 1 million Sing dollar? Uh, because uh, you look at the GDP of Singapore is actually quite it's quite high la. the average singaporean gdp is quite high okay. but how do they manage to control the hgv fest at such a low price i think uh, from my from my understanding right uh, they have they use the mechanism of the supply and demand because they control uh, the bulk of the hdb flat and that then they, they, don't, they don't simply build they build a low they build a small quantity every year they can build every year they will build okay hmm. So they will not have uh, insufficient for sure because I have seen the blocks and blocks uh, without people want. So they slowly, you know, they uh, let people go in, but surely they will have pockets of people and then slowly it will mature. So the gist is still, they want you to convert to become Singaporean. Especially in Malaysia, uh, you have privilege, uh, un unspoken privilege. Yeah. But like <laughs> places like near the airport, uh, I went to see when it was under construction, how is the places now? Uh? Because it's quite far from city centre. I mean, it's quite far from the, the job market. Uh. So people every day have to travel like one and a half hours via MRT ah, to the, uh, remember, in the East Coast area. About, remember I talked about Satellite City? Yeah. Yeah, Satellite City, right? In Okay, those so-called housing one, right? Is they already have their shopping malls and government, you know, offices. So all these people, basically, they were just, you know, the residents themselves. And then, yeah. uh, example like Pungo, you know, it's tied to shopping malls you know, and the waterfront facility and then offices. So it's a mini city itself, you know. And then on top of that, for Changi that you have highlighted, right, Changi, they have created a special so-called IT hub. 
and then it tied to the expo. Yeah, next to the next to the airport is the expo, right? So and then of course they tie it again with the LRT station. Okay, I've asked enough questions. So maybe uh, Wendy, you want to continue the panel discussion? Uh, before that, I would like to ask that what is the Singapore this decentralized approach applies in Malaysia context? Do you think that possible? Uh, a bit hard, lah. But Malaysia also try to decentralize. Yeah. Uh, in the nineties, right? The first one decentralized is actually set up Putrajaya. Okay, so you move the whole uh, government administrative out of the KL city that was very very jammed. I think Alan, you can you can you, you can feel that right. So okay, so the I only Putrajaya, came back in two thousand. Ah, uh, it's uh, it's about that time lah. It's about that time. So before that, right? Uh, I I only started working of ninety nine, but then I used to go to KL. Uh, but I also can feel you know it's very congested. It's just like Jakarta, you know, hopeless. Then they moved Putrajaya out, and then also they set up a uh, Cyberjaya. So you know all those uh new technology kind of thing, a new investment, new opportunity, you know, tied back to Putrajaya in a way that you know companies and workers. And government staff a lot because Malaysia is really very really heavy government staff, yeah, yeah. So a lot of civil servants, yeah. So all these, you know, will not jam up uh, the the city itself, and that is for me is quite successful, yeah. Because after they shift up to the right, they put uh, uh, the uh, KLCC area to boost it up as a tourism cent uh, focus. And also the retail and the commercial, lah, and then change the image of uh, Kuala Lumpur and Malaysia, and that is a very very I would say that is that is a very very smart move, yeah. And then it set the benchmark of how you can, uh, re I would say that revitalize a city, an old city, right? But that time, it's actually quite controversial because the site of KLCC actually is a race course, yeah. Uh, it was a race course, ah, so. You know, uh, and then you have to move this one and decide to take out the race course, you know, and then become a commercial. And then it set the benchmark of uh, that many city mayor right, want to follow that you have a high rise, a super tall high rise, uh, super tall building. And then you have a shopping mall and you have a recreational, a team recreational. Lah. So that time is a, uh, for KLCC is the, is the water kind of oasis in the city center. Yeah. Quite smart. So that is the first, 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 I would think that is very successful. But now, you know, the whole Malaysia is just leave it to the private sector to drive the uh, individual so-called satellite town, lah, you know, but that, that satellite town for me is like chopping cakes, you know, it's really, really, uh, other than I can imagine is Desa Park City, I don't see many successful um, planning, yeah. Uh, but according to planning, what I think Sunway property, they also did a good job of planning. What, what do you think, sir? Uh, yes, but that is still belong to the old paradigm. After that, right, you can see, right, it's still you know chopping cake. You mean that like this part is a uh, terrace house, and then you have a uh, high rise residential. You know, it's 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 still like you take a two D plan, yeah, and then you draw boxes. Okay, so that is still on, on that paradigm, but now we are moving ahead, you know, with uh, so much urbanized, right? Uh, I recent one, I can see that is a bit of imagination that you try to have a link bridges across the city center itself. Uh, but you can see, right, uh, with a lot of things has been on 2D, right? Uh, example, Sunway, Lagoon, or all this, you know, even, you know, uh, Bataling, you know, all this is, it's it's still like you know uh, uh, traffic human activity you know um, uh, it's still pretty much to the yeah. So it means that what 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 I mean is that you know so uh, if it means it's still pretty much two D it means that you know you have your building blocks of the most you can imagine is a podium, yeah, and then you have all the car parks yeah, uh, then you have the high rise you know and then you have facility floor on top of the podium and you have some retail at the bottom because that's where the human will walk. Yeah. Uh, maybe you have a bit of 
uh, convert you know, the green from the ground to the vertical building. And that's all the paradigms at, at today. Uh, yeah. And we have not yet you know, moved to really uh, design in a very urban, urban language. Yeah. And then you look at all the road, all this, right? It is still pretty much, you know, um, uh, car centric. Uh. So it means that uh, Malaysian had no choice to depend on the car and then uh, move around, you know, uh, so called this one township to the other township. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, the public transportation also not very really well planned. And then, yeah, even from one scheme to the other scheme, right? You, you cannot move if you have luggage, if your people, you know, uh, on wheelchair, it's, it's very difficult. And then old people also not friendly to old people. Uh, if you can drive, you're not healthy, then that's it, you know. You not even can go into the bus. And then one more thing I want to highlight. In Singapore, I have buses, right? When they are land in, right? The alighting, right? They are, have a platform that can lower down. And then uh, the driver have to come and push the wheeler, uh, the person on the wheelchair one, right? Up to the, the bus, and then take the cut, and then the uh, then only that the other uh, close the door, and then the other person, you know, other passengers right can come up from the front door, and this is something really good. So there are many people, you know, even among my friends, right, they start to think, you know, I better convert lah. When you get over uh, in Malaysia, very difficult, especially uh, if Malaysia moving ahead uh, adopting this kind of high rises, right, and then without connection and without uh, communication, right. Uh, people are going to live in isolation and then it's going to be very, very difficult for, especially, you know, we have been nuclear friendly, you don't have support. So when you get old, it's going to get very, very, very lonely, I would say, in Malaysia context, yeah. So Singapore, in that sense, you know, they have better if you, at least you can on your wheelchair, electric wheelchair, you know, from the house, uh, move all the way wherever you want to go. Except maybe some high terrain, you cannot go, like hiking, you cannot go. Yeah. I, I've got another question is that uh, since uh, Singapore is going for this, I mean like Singapore is a small island portion, you all know that. What if one intuition one day all mm. of the land in Singapore is using up like because in Malaysia the previous uh uh Mr. Ella have a lecture with us is that some developer you try to use some that land within that city or within that community area. So I was thinking, Singapore is much smaller, and also what I was thinking, what if Singapore really end up losing their land? What we what do we what do you mean by losing their land? Means that all the land will be fully occupied by all the buildings or infrastructure like roads, highway. Uh, don't worry, they, they will restructure. So they will tear down the building and rebuild. So now they are in uh, some kind of uh, prioritize uh, what building will be important in the part of the history, what would not. But that extend yeah. from uh, Wendy's question, I would like to know any, from the government side, is there any law and uh, the level of approval to control the quality? Because uh, like Malaysia, we have much more land, but it sometimes comes up with some bad development with uh, very bad quality. Since so, uh, Singapore does not have that much of land to execute, is there any control of or ways that governments try to scan through all the proposal? Ah, of course. Uh, when you stop, when the first thing we start, right, you have to uh, much more because uh, urban control, they, you have to go through URA planning and then also the urban design. So it will be more dressed up in the urban design. So if you fall into the heritage area, then you have to go through the heritage requirement. And But of course, uh, the heritage requirement is more about preservation of the facades, uh, not much about activity inside. So if you're talking a deeper level, uh, I think Penang do a better job. Sorry to say that, yeah. yeah. So um, for Singapore, um, because of this um, issue, right, I will say uh, they try the most they can do is with all these policy and requirement, right, you'll go through all these and different authorities. Uh, end of the day, right, uh, economics still drive the thing and then 
they will revamp the whole thing you know the the activity uh, i don't think so even you don't it, it, you cannot have pasamalam here because they try not to encourage pasamalam because it's a low ec uh, economic model but they are currently at the moment you know uh, in a how to say uh, up as Especially after this COVID, you know, this COVID, they are actually thinking about there's many things that's happening. Uh, too many young people, they suicide. Yeah, the case is getting serious, yeah. And then there are too many people, you know, bound, homebound, uh, and then people have not have that kind of skills. Uh, uh, end up, there's a lot of, you know, uh, we call that dom domestic uh, criminal, yeah. Very sad, very sad in Singapore. And people don't know how to live even with their neighbor. Yeah, so uh, they are moving ahead, you know, with, um, uh, I don't know how they can, only I think that the, the real improvement will come in, you know, uh, when all these old blocks are is facing out and then they be, build bigger window, bigger uh, door, and hopefully, you know, with uh, more sky garden, all this, but yet the building itself, even you look at Pinnacle, uh, you can see it's quite rigid. It means that you know it is it's not like the floor plan is the same and then you just stack it up yeah so uh, that that is the paradigm of current singapore do i answer your question in, in terms yes. of another question is that in terms of finishing do they have uh, the qaqc is under bca to control ah it's under bca yes and then also they have uh, another one is constructability, not only sustainable, uh, they, not only those so-called like sustainable, the green marks or whatever, they have another one is constructable. And that one is for all the, the contractor to achieve. I think Malaysia also have, but not so much of uh, executions. Uh. In Singapore, really, uh, uh, contractor really have um, much more, uh, how to say, um, they have schemes, uh, like example, uh, recently, right, they, example, contractor, you can apply, you know, they have uh, like subsidy. You can apply to use, you know, IT to do your inspection, example. So you can use app, you can develop apps for the IT control, inspection, and also the maintenance at the later stage. Yeah, so all this one, they try to incorporate, they let you do experiment. They have a fund, you know, for you to apply. So, as example, my last project, right, it was uh, the contract, the subcontractor, the MEP one, right, because I was working for a uh, main contractor, design and build. So, the subcontractor, right, for the MEP one, right, they apply the grant, you know, do you know how much the grant? One million. One million for you to implement all the smart MEP system. So, you can try and then you connect it, how you do inspection, you know, how they don't, later on you transfer it into, do into the BIM modeling, you know, for the so-called uh, 5C, 6Cs, you know, yeah. And then how do you, you know, uh, uh, implement, you know, energy efficiency, yeah. So it's not only about sustainability, it's to the next level, but really can work or not in the long term, uh, yet to see that. But at least this is something the government actually pump in the money, try to let people to, to encourage people to try. Yeah. In, in Malaysia, I think the quality is very much uh, driven by the private sector. So, like, if you work for Echo World, yeah. they have their own uh, quality system. So, uh, mm. they, are, they are finishing. That is higher than the normal, uh, so-called our Malaysian standards. But uh, I think their quality mm. system, they are, they are mixed and matched. Uh, from, some from mm. Singapore, this, uh, you know, there's a quality system called Con Concourse, right? Concourse, yeah. Concourse, huh? yeah. yeah, I think they, they are modified from there, plus others' uh, quality standards. Yeah. So individual developers like the reputable mm. ones like IJM, Echo mm. World, uh, Gamuda, mm. they have their own quality standards. Yeah. Can have good and bad, lah, because this one, I mean, the developer will control the pricing, lah, because they are the ones who fund the project. They, how, how they're going to market it is up to the private. It's in, in Singapore, uh, this is what they give. But then in terms of uh, social housing, that will be HDB. That's why HDB always go for minimum. But recent years, they have a bit flexibility. Uh, example, right? 
Uh, recently, I, I helped a friend to so-called renovate her own unit. Like, it's a friend's mother, like, auntie. Like, yeah? And then she just get her retirement unit. At the age of 55, right, you can get a retirement unit up the subsidies, uh, like 150000 at a unit, like one room, one hall. So one room, one hall, but she can opt to have kitchen cabinet, uh, cabinet high or low. So it's up to her to choose, you know. And then the finishing, she want mood A, B, C. So they can choose, you know. So I will say that, you know, uh, they let people choose. And also at the same time, if you want whatever you selected, right, uh, HDB will say, this is a standard they want. But uh, I myself, I inspected the unit, I said to say, um, one thing I inspected, right, maybe, maybe it's because of the younger generation, uh, is um, how to say, uh, uh, in Singapore, right, when you come up, most of people, architects, uh, they don't want to do from, um, start from new. They don't want to do the low end, you know, like you really, to see how you construct the things, yeah. So a lot of them actually very much focus on drawing and drawing. And because the project are so-called bigger, like, you know, um, for Malaysian, we also do, do bigger project, but of course the Malaysian, you know, architect, you will have to burn your midnight oil, you know, do a lot of things, you know, so-called passion, yeah. So you will make sure things done well, you know, you don't want, a Malaysian, right, you have a things that you, whenever you build, right, your drawing, you are coordinated in a way that you know that you cannot afford to have a, a claims, yeah. EOT or whatever. But in Singapore case, right, the, the thing they will depend on the thing called short drawings. And is 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 costly into the contract, yeah. So cost into the contract until after 10 years, 20 years, uh, you no longer cost into the contract. It becomes a, a part of the contribution by the contractor. Yeah. So it means that you have to submit the short drawing for the architect to approve, you know, of all the installation. And then uh, how, how can you uh, how can the structures uh, and the MEP well call the thing that in Singapore even in HDB you know uh, the aircon pipes I right, had nowhere else to go to penetrate through you know to the hall <laughs> then <laughs> then you know uh, have like, a certain hole like, but that hole is very limiting you know you you have to go through the hall and then the pipe will expose in the hall and then go through to the room again so you see one pipe and then you have to do your own box up yeah. So I would think that for me, I would think this is not really thing true. Uh. This it become you transfer the cost. Yeah. So uh, so it depends on. So if you let the private one drive this right, that is a they are good thing. But of course that is private uh, uh, development. So private will actually they they really think about yeah because it's when private build right, you build everything is there already. There's no choice or you want finishing no finishing because that is drive by the private. And then you have a sample house right. So when you build, right, this is your reputation. <laughs> but HDB is subsidized by government, and then uh, the most you can do is complain. <laughs> yeah. What? Well, how many percent of Singapore citizens live in HDB currently? Do you have the right uh, data? You uh, say half, mean, half of the population. More, more. I think if I'm not mistaken, it's about ninety and over. Yeah, yeah. From our research, it shows that. Around 90% residents are living in HDB. So that means 10% uh, of them stay in, live in the condo and landed. Yes. The, only the 10% are privileged. The uh, other 90% are, are still <laughs> staying in HDB flats. Yeah, who want to pay you know, the same size? Uh, I'm not talking about ceiling height. Uh, because private one ceiling height is really higher. You have uh, 3 meters. Okay, so die die you will have a 2.8. Yeah, In HDB you don't have, yeah. And then you don't have other of other facility will come with a cost uh, maintenance cost. So, <laughs> so how, how, you you want to uh, Ellen, can you can you repeat the question again? So I was actually asking how many percent of the Singapore uh, citizen lives in the HDB. Okay, yeah, then so, Wendy was saying that it's more it's almost that ninety percent. So okay. which means that ninety percent of the Singaporean citizen lives in HDB. Therefore, only 10% live in the free price property. That means they live in the condo. But I thought there are more condos in C Singapore. Like, there are a lot of condos also. If expatriate la. <laughs> Expatriate more. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So expatriate is supporting the economic in a way. <laughs> they need you to pay tax, right? Okay. Because, uh, okay, one more thing. You buy the building, right? You buy a property in Singapore. Example, condos, right? 
you have that's another measure uh, that you asked the question before uh you have you have to pay for the tax and they have a tax of if you are foreigner you if you're okay if you're singaporean you pay three percent okay if you are pr you have to pay uh, another five percent that is eight percent if it's more than one million you have to pay nine percent if yeah if you are non you have to pay uh, eighteen percent or nineteen percent. So for, like for buying or selling, buying, buying, or pay extra that, tax. Yeah, so you that so called extra tax uh, and you pay in advance. When you buy, you pay. It's not when you sell. I see. <laughs> I see. Yeah, but there are many still can afford lah. So they are trying to. They have not released it yet. It means that Singapore still. Uh, see that there are demands and then they try uh, Singapore still try to market it to all the expatriate that you know they can take care of your job they are jo good job opportunity they are good life so yeah so they they need to really service uh, this group of people that paying all the taxes uh. yeah and recently of course this will come back to again to the national policy you know many Singaporeans are really not happy because um no choice, you know, but these many Indian and China people has to so-called become here, migrate, you know, yeah. And then most of the case, they will try to get a PR and then they can escape the 10%. Uh. So they only pay 8 or 9%. So Singaporean become, you know, uh, not happy because they will share the job markets. Yeah. But no choice. If you don't job, right, who want to come here and pay all the tax? Singapore has always been relying on foreign uh, talents. Uh, labors and foreign talents, yes. Yes. Malaysia also want to go that way, but I think recently I just saw the news, you know, even the second home, uh, unfortunately, you know, they retrieve, you know, some privilege and then high up the level. Yeah. So also high up the level, you know, so it will be more difficult, the requirement higher. Yeah. So all this one, all these parameters, it will keep adjusting, and then it will depend on the economic situation. Now. but at the moment, most of the country, right, the government, they are still trying to hold up this one because there's no other incomes already. Because the whole world economic, right, has not really you know moving much. As well, we all know, right, even in architecture, right, the buildings, right, we have built quite a number. In fact, we also have surplus. We have surplus. So how moving forward, you know, yeah. In this one, if other than those very old one, you have a opportunity to re revitalize it, right? Then you have to tear down. You know, they are not qualified because now there are new more technology coming in. You know, maybe you know if the infrastructure will work different way. So I think there is this whole thing that you know, uh, government is still you know hesitate really want to move forward because still waiting even for the energy. Yeah. The energy, you know, uh, they are talking about, you know, different type of energy, no longer just the, the petrochemical base, yeah, because cannot afford, other than even, even solar panel, you know, it's not that that efficient yet. Uh, and then one more thing, yeah, uh, Singapore, right, uh, recently, right, they allowed uh, organic farming or farming and solar panel and the top of the roof of all the HDB flats, yeah. So whoever, you know, um, whoever think that, you know, they want to, they rely on private to take the initiative. Let's say uh, there's a private want to, uh, 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 let's say, lease the roof uh, for farming, right? Uh, they can apply to Singapore government. But for the solar, right, at the moment, they are doing a testing, see how things going. Uh. Yeah. Another question I just came on my mind. How about yeah. those low, the lowest, the ten percent below, you know, at the lowest of the, the the income, uh, income group who who really cannot afford to buy a HDB flat. Is there any uh, other alternative housing for them? Uh, they still can apply, but uh, because at Malaysia you can move to Kampong. Really, I mean, you have, you know, you have a family land. Singapore, yeah. virtually, there's no place you can retreat you know it's, it's actually a <laughs> island state so the lowest 10 percent of these urban poor people mm. how do they resolve their housing problems okay you don't see beggar on the street huh? 
probably they are. Beggar. You don't see, you don't see beggar on the street, right? Maybe they are, but you cannot see them, right? Hmm. You never able to see them. At what? Where are they? So basically, they are still in the HDB flat, the small unit one, according to whatever their their status are. If they are, they are also like studio type. They HDB they have studio, one bedroom or two bedroom or three bedroom, you know, and four bedrooms. Yeah. Uh, they are moved to those uh very small unit, one bedroom or studio but they are heavily subsidized. Like they can rent from the government uh, $90 per month, things like that. On top of that, uh, on top of that, right, government will see the situations right, and subsidize them. Like they have coupon, you know, food coupon, grocery coupon, you know, basically sponsored, sometimes it's sponsored by those um, uh, government related corporations. Uh. Yeah, like fair price, all this is related to government. So it's pretty much a socialist system. Mm. Uh, there are some questions in the uh, chat box. One is from the Yu Qian. How about homeless people in Singapore? I just answered already. Yeah, I just answered. Another one is from Yu Shen Feng. Are living models such as co-living, co-house available in Singapore? As we see countries like Taiwan is Bali? Uh, yes, but pretty much driven by private. When you talk about co-living, you're talking about uh, you're renting a room, a small room, or a bed, you know, and then you have the common area, your daily common area, like uh, your eating place or on or your your washing area yeah it's pretty much driven by private and then it's always dressed up nicely lah. you mean that it's uh exclusive yeah so uh that is a different rental other than that it means that recently the this covid right it forced because there's no tourism and then it forced a lot uh those hostel right turn into so-called core living yeah core living but the core living will appear like they're still using the the, the existing facility it means that you can rent a bed. It used to be you rent a bed one night, yeah, fifty dollars. Yeah, now all twenty five dollars. It depends on location and how how nicely they dress it up. And but during the COVID, because many Malaysians also stranded here and they cannot go back, so they open it for in a case like you can rent a bed on a monthly basis five hundred, five hundred ah, sing dollar ah. <laughs> so it means that uh, in a way government is asking you to work the whole life don't be lazy <laughs> <laughs> okay what's the next question okay the next question is from Sun Affordab affordability housing high dense housing high dense is there any allowance space for greenery cover because based on my observation on HDB flat it looks solid without green cover and green space. This one is from Sun. Uh, what do you mean by without green cover? Uh, yeah. It, what do you mean uh, by green I, coverage? Uh? Yeah, yeah, because what based on my observation, what I understand about Singapore is uh they are going towards uh you know, reducing the temperature in Singapore. And then mm -hmm. What I see is like uh in HDB houses, yeah, we are the aim is actually going for affordability. So is there does green spaces like uh green lens like does landscapes are actually uh in considering in HDB HDB flats? When you say green, are you talking about vertical? Yeah, yeah. Uh I can tell you right, uh if you look at the HDB flats, right? In terms of uh, horizontal, right, the green is actually very much, much more luxury than Malaysia's apartment, private mm. apartment. So the coverage, I can tell you, is more than 30%. Mm. Yeah. So from what you see there, right, and then the ground floor all are open void deck. You don't feel they are so close down, you know, you feel that uh, the, the green, and then you can walk freely and the ground floor. Uh, is pretty much at ease uh, in that sense. You don't feel, but the only thing is that, you know, they 
I don't think they have a need you know, to really you know, go vertical. And some of the uh, examples, just now the video also show you they have some sun shading, sun shader, yeah. That's all they do at the moment because the window is also so small. Other than an exclusive um, condo that is actually partly HDB first and then it become a condo after five years, yeah, become a condo. That is, that's change, yeah. So those type of unit, right, the window are big, bigger. Even the window bigger, right, when you live inside, right, for me, I feel that it's okay. Yeah, but then it is a bit suffocating unless you open your door so that, uh, to allow cross ventilation. If not, you know, yeah, uh, it, it, it's not that windy. Uh, and in terms of basic comfort. Uh. So I don't think that they are really moving forward for other things. Yeah, more important, I think for me is basic comfort, like floor to floor, ceiling height, you know, all this to encourage, you know, how they lay out it. But the thing is to make it more comfortable, have cross ventilation, all this, you know. But the thing is, you know, because they now they are so heavily depends on air conditioning, uh, even HDB flat. Uh, in the old one, they were stuck their split unit at the windows, yeah, unsightly. Uh. So at the later on, right, after the, the 90s, right, they move all these, you know, they put a so-called aircon latch uh, at the behind. So all the aircon pipe, you know, a pipe again, we pipe. So it looks nicer from the outside. But overall, I would think that there are more other issues, yeah? If you see, right, uh, if you have experience, right, uh, living in Singapore, for me, right, I think the layout is not encouraging social interaction, yeah? It's just like Lee Kobuzi have said uh, in the old days, right? He said, you know, actually we are human that actually been forced to adapt to live in high rises. And actually it's proven. It's proven, pretty much proven, especially in Singapore. People don't want to talk to their neighbor. Don't even like to open the door. So end of the day, you know, you just close the door, close the window. You don't want to see anybody. You 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 appreciate the privacy more than other things because you're so tired, you know. Yeah, you don't want to have disturbed. Yeah. So end up, you know, uh, it, it's live in a very isolated life lah, in Singapore. And if anything happened, right, it all depends on government to... To, to tell them, you know, and the notice board to tell them, you know, uh, get free thing, you know, get, get you know, the free test kit from the government, to get the free mask from the government. And the CC will be lo located in every satellite city, yeah. Satellite town, lah. yeah. So in a, in a way that uh, Singapore has gone uh, very set in this aspect, and now they do see, you know, with the high demand on the school students uh, and the digital world, right, they see really, really there is a demand, you know, a psychological problem, a mental problem. And they are setting up, you know, all the special counselor um, uh, to be housed at every school to attend to all these problems. Yeah. So I'm not sure, you know, whether uh, the government itself, you know, is really looking at that. It's not only the, um, this thing has close relationship to the building, but I believe so. Lah. You know, uh, um, I, I didn't have any conversation, you know, or anything that they, they only have look at the, the side that, you know, okay, they have a student problem, psychological problem, you know, uh, they will have a counselor, but uh, they have not looked at actually what about the environment actually also can affect the human behavior or it is actually the human behavior affect the, the environment and then change the environment, but architecture you know the building once it's up it can be last for 100 years and then the lease for singapore building is 99 years so what are you going to do with this yeah so this for me i think is a bigger issue than just about green all this yeah all right thank you yeah we have a few more questions one is from june i'm wondering if the uh, kids getting married if they want to move out from the old house and form a new family how long does it take for them, means the new family, to apply for a new HDB? Ah, I never bother about all this. So <laughs> I'm mean, not the best person to tell. But <laughs> usually they say quite long. La. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they, once you marry, right, uh, I, what I understand uh, from Shoshio, okay, uh, or friends, uh, yeah, uh, once you, they actually encourage you to get married. Yeah. So it, could be quite fast, yeah. Like, but even quite fast, right? It will be maybe one, two years, something like that. 
But more importantly, there are many people with uh, they sign up says, but end up they divorce <laughs> even before they get a house. <laughs> but usually when you get a HDB, right, let's say new HDB, uh, not from the resale market. Uh. Resale market, you mean the existing building. Um, it usually takes you three to five years. Yeah. You, you mean that they are priority to the one that don't have HDB flat or...? Okay, yes. It means that, let's say you are getting married, so you don't have, uh, you, you leave your, your family. So now you, 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 you just married, right? So you have a marriage certificate, right? So you can apply. So you are, you are, you are put as a priority. So they will let, because you have to go for allocations. Allotment uh, means that, so they open for, okay, this few block, this area, they open. So you come to HDB, right? You see, ah, there's this, this area got uh, this opening, you know, opening new blocks, yeah. So you will go say, I, okay, I want, to, uh, I want to book. You have the first thing, you have to register. After you register with them, they will call you, you know, okay, this day is our open day, come and queue. Come and queue, you know, this time, you know, and then you choose. So they will allo allocate, you know, okay, you, you select later, you will be the next day or the next day and next day. Yeah, so you're early, you'll be the earlier day. You come and then you choose your unit. So you say, okay, I want to buy into this area, this field block. Okay, I have a chance to select. Yeah. So this is a privilege that they, they will give. Them. And another question for Eliza. As Singapore is a data city, will governments put more enforcement on waste reduction, no plastic or waste recycling? Did the government do that or they are ongoing? Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's a white elephant. Uh. Unfortunately, they have some of the so-called the, the plastic, you know, uh, bins, you know, or some area they have one big bin, the big, uh, bigger bin. Some area they have the three separate bins. Uh, you can see like maybe uh, two, three blocks, you know, share one. And then if you are more concern right you can actually you know uh, uh, take those things and then put it there because in the every unit right in the old days uh, old apartment right they have the shoot the rubbish shoot uh, inside your kitchen that is the old old model so the the, the new model now they have the shoot every floor outside outside of the corridor yeah after area common area usually it's quite near you know to the lift or it, it just just like condo, just like Malaysia condo, okay. So the another thing is that uh, everyone have to tap out all this and then take it to the bin, yeah? But uh, there has no real education, you know, how you should do that because the real one, the real cost of uh, recycling right, is, is the cleaning and the sorting. That one takes a lot of effort. That is actually the biggest cost of uh, recycling, but that it has not been done uh, Singapore is not really encouraging. And then Singaporean, right, they love convenience. So everywhere they go, tap out all plastic. They don't really even care about the health, you know, plastic, all this like Malaysian, no. And then there were time that Singapore tried to implement like, okay, uh, those, those who take plastic, uh, you will be charged, yeah, but what was complained by people and then it was not successful. So, uh, and then, for me, my understanding is uh, there's another reason that uh, Singapore is actually one of the very important economic right, is the oil refinery. Because uh, plastic is a secondary economic of the oil refinery. So it is, there is a certain income from there. Lah. So it's not really um, into uh, recycling. Unless until one day, you know, the oil industry has to go and just only for maybe uh, military or for uh, aerospace or even for aeroplane, all this, you know, uh, I don't think plastic will be go away unless the country is really serious. Because I have went to Rong Prabang, Rong Prabang, you know, um, this little heritage, uh, UNESCO city, even it's just like kampong house, you know, uh, but they have done very well. Every house, right, end of the day, right, they will pack all the rubbish uh, according to the type. And then you don't see the food waste outside one because they can do it. Because the food waste, right, they will actually recycle and decompose by themselves. 
it's like a kampong house setting, you know. So all the ways are uh, they were packed into three, three different types, and then you can see uh, the bags are uh, they are sorted out, you know, three different types put at, in front of every household. And then by the next morning, you can see all those bags are uh, disappear. Yeah, it's more successful uh, in that sense, yeah. Okay, uh, I'm not sure the, uh, any of you has saw this uh, image or photo before. Actually, this, one, uh, this photo is quite popular in Facebook currently. Yeah. I, I, don't know, I don't know what what, what, what makes that. Uh. This one actually is one of the public housing comparison. The above one, that one actually is in Berlin, Germany. And the below one is, actually the below one is the Photoshop. Uh, the Photoshop profile is it's not actual real in Malaysia, lah. but but Malaysia situation is almost like that. It means that they have those out upcoming zinc roof panel and they have the steel steel cover for the balcony area. And some area have the have the cells and those those poster well. And they, they will also have the canopy outside. So perhaps they can have their commercial activity outside on. And next. This one actually is situated in uh, nearby my house area. I just took a photo of that. This one also can see that if you can compare the just now, just now what the uh, new studio has shared in Singapore in the, the video and also those photos, and you're comparing the one that in Malaysia current public housing. You can see the differences in terms of the cleanliness and also I mean like uh, I'm not sure how Singapore citizens how they live, how they live, how is their lifestyle. But in Malaysia we we all know that this I don't know how to say, but this one is our Malaysia identity. Yeah, and so can say that this is our Malaysia so We put the clothes outside and then we all have the those extra those wiring thing. And then those aircon compressor is not aligned. This one is uh, most most common seen in public housing. Okay. And this one is just a small case study as we have uh, previously we have some talks and conversation with the studio and we think that this uh, case study can be brought for we all just for sharing for your chat info. This one actually is a Lee United Rehabilitation in Marseille by one of the one of the most famous academic composition as uh Miss Jojo had mentioned just now that Singapore also inspired from his his work. Next. Okay, Lee Composer, uh okay, her his real name I can't read we are Charles Edward Delnet. And she is what uh, was a Swiss French architect. Uh I I'm not sure anyone knows that actually it also have uh had good experience and use of experience in urban planning as well. And actually also as one of the pioneer, pioneer on modern architecture. Next. I think um, I think as everyone knows that Lee Corbusier building and art has is a con we we current Sihori appears, the modular man actually is a stylish uh, human figure that the human actually is standing proudly and square shoulder. And actually it's sometimes with one arm raised like, like this one. It's a mask of the composite system for reordering the universe. Actually, the modulum was seen as a universal system of proportion. The ambition was rust, and it's and actually it actually was devised to be constant max, the human form, and also architecture, and also combine beauty into one singular system. Okay. This one is one of his famous work. It's called the Li United Dehabilitation in Marseille. It's copied in 19, 1952 in Marseille in Paris. The, the, this building actually totally composes the most famous quote. I think everyone has known that a, mach, a house is a machine for living. And actually it applied into an entire community. And the result outcome is that it was a self-contained concrete vessel that structured in like an ocean linear. And Lee Corbusier built that kind is after the Second World War II. And Lee Corbusier believed that this tower block actually is a solution for rehousing the masses. Because uh, after the Second World War II, like, everywhere is having the, those war after effect, like the, most of the housing was demolished and also the land demolished and abandoned as well. So he was thinking that this, 
this high rise public housing can can house all those low income people and residents as well. Next. I think we can just briefly talk about how is the space planning going through in this uh, building. Actually, in you can see on the section and plan on the left side, actually each apartment lies on the two level. You can see that the gray one, the gray one, the entrance is at the upper floor. But for the white portion, for the white portion unit, the entrance is at the lower floor for that unit. So actually it creates a creates a sequence. It creates a different different grid and system for this uh, building. And actually it comes like on those floors without corridors, actually the apartment can stretch from one end of the building to the another. So each has a balcony on the west side. Next. And so it is not like a typical apartment because of this unique space management. Actually, because of this arrangement, it comes out that those access corridor, well, we call it a tree star during that time. Actually, it's only needed to be accommodated on every third floor. So you can see that the blue one that colored in actually is on the only corridor in this building. It just appears in any every three floor. They are just fine in total. So a little bit extra is that you can see that on the bottom it actually is an open space space as well. And the middle is shown in the purple color, actually it's an open space as so for this, if you compare it to this one and comparing or to Malaysian public housing, you can see that Malaysian public housing or even though apartment or condo as well, we, we, it doesn't have this kind of approach in design in Malaysian context. Next. And so also this one, these are the field image on this building. And also when, when I see, when I research it and I see through this image, I think about it. In, even though I lived in apartment before, I, I, I didn't live in Papua Asia, but I lived in apartment before in Malaysia. I mean, like in, even though apartment, we don't, also don't have those roof garden, those roof that is accessible for people to go up and just have no community activity. Because in usual Malaysia, rooftop is mostly allocated for water tank, all that, all that service or service uh, items. Next. And because uh, due to this uh, unique characteristic of space and also you can see that it, actually uh, in, in Malaysia, I've been done did some research. Yeah. In Malaysia, they don't, we don't have any duplex unit in Malaysia, except for KL. In other such as, uh, even though it's outside KL, outside KL, like no satellite city, like Subang, or maybe our my my whole house area, home area like a home, we don't have quite much though this kind of duplex unit actually. Next. So this one is the latest photo of this uh, duplex unit. So next. So I will pass this uh, another case study to our friend so far. Um, so I would like to present about another case study, which is known as Casa Mila in Barcelona, Catalonia, by the architect Antonio Gaudi. Uh, so a brief, short brief um, about uh, the architect Antonio. Uh, Antonio Gaudi is actually uh, is a Catalan architect. is also known as the greatest exponent of uh, Catalan modernisms. So, um, because um, it, he himself is a very, uh, very strong um faith in God. So, in actually, uh, he also applies a lot of the elements of about um uh, his religions to his works. So, and it also uh earned him a nickname of God's architects. So um, we get into the uh, projects Casamila. Casamila, or known as uh, La Bridra, sorry if I pronounce wrongly. Uh, the meanings of it is uh, the stone quarry, which is refers to its rough uh, appearance. Um, it was also the last um, private residence um, project done uh, designed by Anthony Gaudi. The project, um, this building itself is uh, 
At first, is commissioned by the Pedro Miller and his wife, Rose and uh, Segment, for their new house after marriage. So, in 1984, this building is declared as a World Heritage Site by the UNESCO. So, um, this building itself is actually is, um, have nine floors. And then, which is considers uh, consists of the basement, ground floor as the garage, and then the mezzanine floor as the entrance of the whole building. Then, um, main floor is uh, for the couples villa, which is um, where they just get into um, by the um, main staircase. And then, um, the ref less over the four upper floors will be rented out during that time, and then uh. Attics uh, for, for the laundry, and then above it is the rooftop. So um, basically, this building is actually surrounded with, with two interior courtyards, and is uh, is actually is in is making in a figure eight shape in plan. So uh, for the entire interiors of Casa Mila, is actually uh because it's is uh, irregular uh, geometric shape and actually he, it, has, it has a clear internal distributions and the four distribute uh, factors uh, is actually uh, try to optimize the use of the facade, uh, the main facades to the south. So um, from the previous pictures we saw that it's actually uh, the facade of the Casamela actually is, uh, is full of the windows. So uh, he itself is tries to design to have most of the natural lightings to uh, into the building itself. Uh, so um, in the right side, we can see that the interior circulations of the whole building and um, Actually, um, most um, the inter inter internal circulations take place through large and bright uh, corridors that the <laughs> around the courtyard. Then the elevator provides a direct access to the apartments and turns uh, for each floor. So um, basically, um, we get into when we entering the buildings. Uh, we could see we could have uh, we will directly um, uh, have the views of the largest uh, pastron of the Casa Mila. The lighting itself will directly flow into the inner windows for maximize uh, the natural lighting for interior space, which is also quite similar as the Chinese uh, traditional architecture. Uh, so um, it also um, because of the lighting itself, so the each unit of the building actually could have a uh, different views uh, towards the rooftop and uh, also uh, to the core of the Casa Mila. Same, uh, same as the facade of Casa Mila, uh, because of uh, the, as we observe from the facade, we could see that uh, the irregular uh, shape of the facades so um, the roof itself also uh, undulating uh, is like a bit a uh, wave uh, of the sea. So um, it's a very interesting um, um, design where it is um, surrounded with a two small uh, two small courtyard and one big courtyard over here. And then uh, in in between uh, of the wall because see a lot of small windows as actually is the uh, small window of the ethics but it looks like a uh, lot of countless eyes opens uh, by the uh, patio so a uh, small uh, sharing is uh, uh, when I'm doing a uh, study on this case study is that I found that the ones that died by uh, Anthony Gaudi is actually very um, Interesting. It's um we could see um a very interested uh interesting design for the van. It's not only for um the appearance uh use, but also um he tries to apply uh, with the aerodynamic displays theory for the smoke. 
um, actually, yeah, um, I'm not really good in physics, but I feel like it's very interesting that sometimes we does have to we don't doesn't have to must be designed in um for um good view or good appearance, but we could apply it um based on um more theory way. So uh the next one will be the uh is another um strange showings that I found uh on the rooftop. And it's actually um designed uh, like a guardian, and uh, like a guardian, a guardian wearing a mo. <laughs> and I also found a different type of ones, like um yeah, for me it's a bit looks like the um drawing screen. So I feel it's a very interesting um design when I was doing this study. So I uh, like to share to you guys. So um back to uh, the um divided uh, between structure and skin. <laughs> the stone uh, facade actually has uh, no bearing function at all. Uh, so it's basically is um depends on the steel beam um, to support it. So um. This uh, arch actually is composed by a uh, 270 parabolic brick arch. And the spring like uh, rib structure creates a very topography above, which is the um, roof of the rooftop. So um, the attic is, is actually is in the shape of catenary arch by the materials of red brick and um, this function and uh, this space is actually function uh, used for the storage and laundry and the source of the light at one is actually depends on the small window which is we saw it previous um pictures then um the small window actually look like the eyes from the top of uh, from the rooftop um, yeah, uh, here are just um uh, some of the questions that when Super and I uh, have, uh, are doing this case study, we just thought of this kind of question. Perhaps uh, Miss Jojo can answer first. Does the whole approach and conception of United and Red and also Casanina gives, gives us a sort of building which can properly fulfill our current social question? What do you think of it? Uh, what, what, what was your question? Again, your question? Uh, uh, does, uh, does the whole approach and concept of the habitat, uh, the unite habitat, and also the Kasamina, give, give us the sort of building which can properly fulfill our current social of the What do you think for me? Uh, for me, I just wonder, uh, because I have, when since school's time, right, I I have these two, you know, was amazed by, wow, the, this is so-called the solutions. But then now, if you talk about social housing right, and what we look at, right, our social housing nowadays, right, the product, the building product right, as a product, is more like a, re, a result of the policy making. Yeah, like uh, more wide geographical things uh, instead of uh, having fun you know uh, like doing something that people will like people will enjoy and people will really love to be in that kind of places yeah um, because I, I i look back right these two buildings are uh, one is how many years ago 70 80 years ago another one is about 100 years ago yes, yes, yes. so i i'm like we are not really doing much. And then most of our housing are basically is still pretty much like, you know, um, just house people, you know, without making people, you know, really love the products, yeah. So, and these two are also, you know, especially Habitat is also social housing. So um, I, I, I think at the current paradigm, right, we have not really, you know, even if you look at pinnacles, right, uh, I look at that, I say, oh, okay, it's something more interesting, but it's sold for one million, <laughs> okay, one unit, uh, as today's market price. Um, I, I don't think it's that fantastic, you know, yeah. 
if you compare to these two buildings. Uh. So it, I, for me myself, because I will look at this model of uh, what is the context and then what is aspiration, you know, and then what is, is the, uh, the product, you know, I, I will think that our today's market is pretty much, you know, um, uh, I would say is profit driven, so even social housing, yeah, because of cost and maintenance, all this. And it's very sad, you know, uh, the product today, it doesn't have that kind of uh, achievement. Despite that, you know, uh, I think today, I, I'm not sure whether all of you agree or not. I would think that, you know, uh, the resources that we have today, uh, we don't have a problem. Yeah, even with the technology, yeah, we don't, we have enough food, you know, we have enough resources to be spared with everyone because we can build so much, yeah. But how come we cannot come up with a majority la, or more building that, you know, people really love, yeah. So I, I, I don't think, you know, uh, what we are doing today, you know, really uh, fit the purpose of, uh, if let's say we want to do a better society, uh, not yet, la, but just house the people, okay? People have some place to live, yeah. yeah. That's my that's my reflection. Uh. I'm not sure whether others, you know, what do you think about uh, architecture has done much or not? And it has proved it can be done uh, many years ago. Perhaps we can open these questions to the floor or any other opinion? Or oh, Mr. Allen, do you have any thoughts on it? <laughs> Uh, only a small comment is I think both projects are I think different nature obviously uh, uh, Marseille was really geared for, so, it's for social housing it's public housing um, while uh, Casa Mila was actually a, more like a private property although it has multiple units uh, so but it wasn't meant for uh, you know for the maybe for the uh, public or public to, you know, it's, it's not for the welfare of the public, more for the private enjoyment, but uh, the, the, the apartments up there are more for a rental. Uh, I've, I've actually, I've visited Asamila, but I haven't seen uh, Marseille. And the picture you shown mentioning about the roof, um, we also tried that in some of our private, private housing, public housing, but it was not very receptive because simply because of our weather. You know, we have, we have two projects which have sky gardens. Uh, they were hardly been used because of the weather. I mean, if this were in, in, in a European, in a European countries or in a temperate climate, I think the residents would love it so much that, you know, they will go up and do sunbathing every day, but not in Malaysia. So sometimes we have to really consider our, our own, um, our own response uh, to all these spaces that it, could, it, it may look good in photos, but in the end, it's not as practical as, uh, you know, our, our, I think naturally Asians, I mean, Asians also, Southeast Asians don't like to sit in the sun because of our weather or tropical climate. We like to be in the shade. So, I would say only sheltered spaces are more useful uh, in our climate. Any other feedback or any other feedback? Yeah, other other. Okay. Or perhaps our from our master student. Joseph, do you have any comment? I don't know um, you would like to say something. Yeah, just now, but. Miss Jojo mentioned, yeah, it's, it's, it shows the sense of a place like what you, you, you show our case studies, the Yuna and Kasamila. It does give to kind of a sense of a place, but just in terms of reality, in terms of costing, it does make a different statement, I would say. So since we are doing the social housing, means we try to make the house become more practical in a way. So I think we might not achieve directly, but for our future approach, we could think about it. Um, we could 
we might not take hundred percent from the case study that you mentioned before, but we somehow we could kind of inspire us to apply to our social housing, perhaps. Yeah. Because for I'm not sure because for my personal project, I really love how we had to get design from the COVID. In terms of the open space from ground floor and also the open space for media, because I think except for those high, high end, high end condo apartment, only have this kind of this kind of design. And I don't think public housing in Malaysia can go for this one. I have to learn about it. Because most of the public housing in Malaysia for the ground floor, they will allocate for more commercial shop houses. So I'm not sure whether Singapore, those public housing, they do have the commercial on the ground floor, the same as Malaysia. They don't, I think, but they are, they are nearby, la, close by la, the, all the, the center, the court area. Yeah, they have supermarkets or food court or hawker centers. And then depends on uh, the size of so-called the hub. Yeah. So some are bigger, you know, then they have uh, even, you know, bus interchange and MRT station. Yeah. And, but some of the unit, like the newer generation in my presentation also show, right, they actually incorporate, you know, those uh, kindergarten um, and the uh, elderly uh, center. La. Elderly center is just basically, you know, some chair, whatever, newspaper, they can go and then, you know, read newspaper and then chit chat with their friends. La. And then also depends on the area. Like Gelang, you know, Gelang area, they have a lot of old folks la, that they have been living there since the 60s or 70s, you know, 30, 40 years and ago. So those area, they will have uh, shops at the below, yeah. So is yeah. So they incorporate those actually at the below the shops yeah. So mm -hmm. those are you know in the eighties models yeah. So it, it it really depends on the community itself. But I I I, I think it's it gives us some thoughts and reflection you know when we do uh space planning what well, we must have in mind you know the activities yeah what really people aspire to you know, and it's not like okay uh we think you know like this. It's like, oh, okay, I, I will usually cook, you know, like one meal, uh, it will serve with three dishes, one soup, and then rice. <laughs> so this is our usual, you know, our, our, our Asian, uh, you know, uh, three dishes. The most more luxury is one more soup, uh, okay? But is, is this the only thing that you can do? So I, I myself, you know, uh, I, I, on my free time, uh, you know, I, I, I will go to some of these kind of so-called, because I also design many low-cost houses uh, <laughs> when I practice in Malaysia. Yeah. And then it's the same thing, you know, you try to be efficient, yeah. So that they can sell at 65000 uh, that time. Yeah. So, I mean that... Uh, we can think about that, you know, there must be other ways that, you know, uh, like, like, like what you highlight is important, like how can commercial also part of the convenience in that kind, you know, what really people want, what is people, you know, in the community, what is the activity, what is that kind of activity, you know, surrounding in the late daily life of everybody, do you want everybody to go through the hard life, really take MRT, LRT, you know, go to somewhere to work, or it can be actually localized, decentralized, you know. What is everybody's uh, daily activity uh, evolving, you know, along the life now? So if you think along that way, you know, that, you know uh, but the thing is, public housing in Malaysia uh, is still pretty much, you know, government driven. So it really has to be a dialogue between, you know, uh, the profession and the government and uh, whether government just want to take this one as an engine, you know, or a tools really to uh, benefit the people or what, yeah. Even this, the same model, you know, of thinking, right, it can be something useful when we design, you know, the private building. It can be medium cost apartment. Yeah. It, so it will be more, much more like you don't concentrate too much on, oh, the material and all the facade, all this kind of thing. It will be concentrated on what really the value that you will bring, you know, and then by the people, you know, what people will live in the community, you know. Sometimes it could be just a small gesture, a very nice, you know, playground. So 
that 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 is my thoughts. Uh. I have uh, some questions also because I noticed that in most of the Singapore HDB flats, the ground floor are open. Uh, this mm. open void, uh, they mm. are for men for public usage. Uh, but yes. I hardly see any effort in actually upgrading or design uh, nice mm. nicer. They are mostly uh, just yes. colonnades and uh, general seating. The, yes. Is it because HDB uh, do not encourage people to occupy those spaces or they, they want to keep the maintaining cost very low? Yes and no. <laughs> okay, yes, because like what you say, they don't want the high maintenance cost. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, it means that they actually prefer it to be use it like they have a need. Sometimes somebody die, you know, somebody get married, they can have a function below. Yeah. Also, future they can insert like the kindergarten, you know, insert the elderly rooms, so it can be remodified. But even during this COVID time, you know, people really want to go down and sit at those, you know, even that now it's so called open ready. Yeah. Uh, last month it's actually closed. Closed, you know, it means that you cannot eat at a public area, right? You cannot dine in, right? But people still need to go somewhere else, right? You go out and eat. You know, when you, you work, let's say you work in a community or right, you go to a next community, you're not going to come back and cook, right? So you're going to tap out. Usually, like, Singapore talks about efficiency. So you will tap out some part somewhere. And you cannot sit down at the roadside, right? You go somewhere else. So these kind of places is very useful. Uh, so the earlier lockdown, last year lockdown, they take all the area, cannot sit. <laughs> hey, I, I, I thought this it's year, actually, uh... already you cannot do. I thought it's a quite a mixed opportunity for uh, the HDB to actually spend a bit more money to do uh, more like, uh, you know, community-based design, community-led design, like a place-making. So mm. uh, there, there could be also opportunity for maybe mm. uh, smaller firms, not really, mm. that necessarily have to be big firms, maybe mm. small, uh, smaller firms who are more creative, uh, mm. that they can work with the local community Work with the local residents associations to design those spaces up, but uh, maybe maybe there are lah, But I I haven't come across any in Singapore. I've only seen like they have worked with some mural artists to paint mm. some uh, quite uh, unique uh, mural at the HDB uh, as a part of like giving give, giving it uh, some uh, artistic artistic touch and also a bit of uh, personalized wayfinding. So rather than my block is five nine four or five eight zero, I I saw some they they have some mural like uh, maybe it's uh, the chopsticks or the the dumpling you know so the residents can identify their block with a certain object that is actually very familiar cultural uh, connotation or something, but that's that's all I've seen uh, But they did not actually spend uh, the effort to to design uh, upgrade those spaces which is quite quite. Um, just left bare like that. Even, even they, they're willing to spend money to upgrade the lift, put in the lift, the common corridor, but they're not mm -hmm. spending money on this public spaces. Uh, uh, yes. Mm. Your, observ your observation is correct, yeah. But how long you visit ago? How long? Well, I haven't been to any... Like, Last visit was too old after the last election. So but we, oh. we went to visit some of the newer 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 project, uh, not not the okay. not the older HDB. Okay, about two, three years ago, lah, huh? Yes, yes. Yeah. So it means that okay, this mural thing also, you know, it's actually come from somewhere else, okay? Not originated from Singapore. Mural, you know, is from all these heritage town and then it's go viral from Penang, as you know. Yeah. So other countries also copy, but there are some in New York, you know. So Singapore is a, in a way that is very sad. It's pretty much towards marketing, you know, and then follow. And then if you go deep down, right, um, I would say like, you know, even I have friends, you know, who are in the artist line one, you know, they say they cannot, they have to become graphic designer. Very sad. Yeah. <laughs> in order to live a life in Singapore, you know, you have to be very commercial. And uh, yes, true. You know, what they can do is the upgrade right, is that they put playground wrong. Like recently, they take the chance, you know, uh, during the lockdown, the four months lockdown last year, uh, they do the upgrade, they repainted the blocks, and then 
they put like beautify the gardens, you know, uh, the, 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 the grass area with a newer playground gazette. So I'm like, mm, okay. So like what you say, uh, the nice gazette, I remember is at a Chinatown or at a Tua Pali, a very old town. Uh. I have remember I saw, you know, that they say they built something like a coconut or whatever, you know, the local fruits, yeah. For those uh, playground, you know, the shit. So for me, I think that is more interesting, you know, but of course uh, that is belong to the era. I believe there be something like what you say, you know, it can be implemented rather than buy the standard gadget, you know, but just modern gadget. Let the artist do something. Uh, so this is something is lacking of. And the arts, uh, I, I would say, you know, is not that, you know, fantastic like, in the local scenes, yeah. Because of all these commercial constraints. And then this, again, you have to come to Singapore geographical constraint, you know. I think perhaps we can move on to second question that we have prepared as well. Uh, I remember that um, one song Thai, uh, Mr. Allen did mention that it said high rise close to the facility. So something I, I, can't, I can't recognize now. Perhaps uh, Sopo can help me to explain on this. So no. Actually, <laughs> actually um, based on the previous uh, lectures, um, so Mr. Allen actually ha um, have says that um, do every high rise building is equal to repetitive and end up where uh, it actually will lose the. Can I continue say? <laughs> okay, so it's <laughs> So is it uh, when high rise um, equal, uh, is in a repetitive um, design, so it is um, losing the identity of committee. So I was thinking that, oh, it's a very um, good question. So I was thinking maybe we could, I could bring out these questions to the audience to see and to have a different uh, perspective of uh, idea based on this uh, question. I think perhaps, uh, or perhaps uh, Miss Dudu can, do you have any idea on this? Uh, why me? <laughs> oh, perhaps I can call them. <laughs> I think perhaps uh, because uh, since uh, Sokun and I have did, we did the study to go for this case study, I mean, like from what I can see in the habitat, because uh, Lee Corbusier not only apply this uh, habitat uh, approach in this Paris, he uh, did apply in Germany. If I'm not mistaken, one of it is in Germany and another three location as well. So I mean, like, if if we as an architect, as a designer, we really need to how house this kind of urbanization that brings out the human population that comes up. Is there any other way rather than just only the ability to design? For example, like the I think the casa the casa mila that you brought out during just the conversation that we have actually is quite inspiring for not only me as a sophomore, we also quite like it a lot. Lah, because we think that hundred years ago the architect and the design can do this kind of stuff while why can't we do this kind of thing in Malaysia? Perhaps we can propose. And the next question, because I have been through uh, one of the book by the Americas uh, Life and Death, the Americas is something like that by Jen Jacobs. And she did, she, uh, she did mention that uh, development seems to end community life. She did mention out the this quote, something like this. Huh? So I was thinking that, I mean, like for sure, we can't expect to design this high rise for sure, we can't expect. But how do we alternate the aim of this high rise? I mean, like you just not only house those or how homeless, not just house those people, but we can have something more other than that. Right? It's one of our, it's one, it's, uh, so fun and I thought about it. So, yeah, it's, 
Is that you got something to say? <laughs> hey, this, this is for you to explore this semester to answer these questions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just to bring out to our master student. So actually, for the next slide, I think for, for Super I we want to not to say emphasize this this uh, but we want to we want all to see I'm not sure this is called called so called problem or is a it's a transition uh, it's a transition of high rise from starting from 1996 after the Second World War II and up until all oh, before that the one that done by Antonio Gaudi. Or oh, perhaps you can look at the one in Malaysia public housing, the design. I don't know is the what what makes what makes that change in terms of the timeline, the context, or perhaps the one that we studied before, the paramet, the paradigm when we study in the sustainable element, the paradigm design, is all those affect all those problem issues during that time that this is up to this kind of design with this kind of architecture. This is, this is the one that we are super and I like to share for all of you. So perhaps you can have some thought of it, perhaps you can think about it, or what can we do next as an architect or as a designer, or perhaps as a master student, perhaps you can propose something a very different within your way. Perhaps I would love to open to the floor if anyone has their thoughts on these three images or anyone wants to share about their own opinion. Yeah, we can have more, more sharing on here. Uh, no, not really. Somebody can talk about that, no? What about you, yeah? I, I, think, I think, you know, um, uh, social housing in Malaysia, right, really have to look at, you know, uh, the early days is actually for public servant. Yeah. And then, of course, the different public servant, you know, for school teacher, headmaster, and then um, uh, the policeman. The policeman, I think now is also the high rise uh, apartment blocks. Uh. And then you have the um, firefighters. So these are the obvious one that we still have, you know, those public housing. And then in, if you look, go into the older towns, right, you can see how it has been built in the history. Yeah, basically, it's still, you know, pretty much like what you have seen in this photo, the yellow box, you know, simple things like that. But the early one, it can, could be, you know, uh, basic concrete blocks with uh, wood, wood inserts uh, on the facade, things like that, and partition, yeah. And then of course it's a walk-up apartment, and then perhaps now it's upgrade with some lift feature. And in Penang also have a, quite a numbers of uh, locals housing. Uh, it those like what you see in the yellow box, you know, yeah, it does the yeah. But then after that, right, Malaysia has moved on, you know, locals housing is the point form, and then with uh parking space for basically motor, motorbikes. Uh. So I think because the society structures uh, is they use the motorbike more, yeah. Then I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, um, how it can move on, but I can only think that, you know, um, efficiency, you know, cost control, all these uh, constructabilities, I, I believe, you know, um, maybe it still can go, go along, you know, modular design and, but it's the planning that it has to be allowed, you know, as, as flexible, as, as open plan as possible. And then let the people, you know, plan, plan what's inside instead of, you know, the architect, you know, um, determine, you know, dictate, you know, how the user should use the space inside. Because when I design, you know, lo local housing, I did propose to the monthlies, you know, say that, um, why not, you know, just, just just keep the hall open, you know, you don't have to uh, determine where is the dining and whatever, you know, 
uh, the leading. But on top of that, you know, actually you can, you know, rethinking, you know, the subdivision of the rooms. You know, in the old days, you know, so many people live in one room, you know. Yeah, or it could be, you know, not even that, you know. So leave it to people to, to partition themselves. But it didn't go through uh, because, you know, people have a really a fixed mind, you know. So I, for me, I think, you know, it's a, an, and the toilet, of course, in the local housing toilet, uh, you, 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 you split it for the convenience, yeah. You split, you know, uh, uh, the one that you need to bathe and the one that you need to poo -poo, uh, you, set, you split that. And of course, kitchen is still an open kitchen when I designed it, you know, open kitchen, no partition, you know, uh, but then really how they separate, you know, it's up to the imagination of, of the people. So I believe, I believe, you know, uh, it sometimes, you know, it could be, it, it's, it's just lack of, you know, maybe you, you do this, you know, the people will, 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 who, who can create it will, can do something about that better, even better than architects, yeah, to suit their needs, yeah. Well, sometimes, you know, but we just said maybe we don't have a architect. We think that sometimes, you know, I feel like maybe we have to reflect, you know, we don't think that we are God, you know, we, we don't have to di dictate, you know, everything for the user. For me, that's my perception. Like, even, you know, uh, I get involved with some of the project, right? I'll try to leave the layout as, as free as possible. And because there's so many ways now, you know, the technology come on the way now available. You can have movable partition, you know, if you can have a budget, you can even you leave it blank, you know, let people renovate according to their needs, yeah. And I also have experience, you know, working overseas. I see how people have built, how they have built uh, their house. Like Egypt, you know, they will build their house, you know, level by level. So they will keep the upper floor right flat. So when they have a the money, they will build up the next level. At the meantime, you know, that flat level will become a roof for the, for the, for the house below. So this is another way, and then they'll leave a rebar in tangle, you know, available. So when they move out, and then at the meantime, you know, that flat roof, flat level, right, become a roof, and also it is a best spot for them to hang a hang up for the whole family in the evening. Isn't that fantastic? If it, especially it's at a hilltop. Yeah, you can whole family can be there, can be barbecue or whatever they want to do. Like. of course, weather is another thing, but yet you know there is an opportunity to give them. So this kind of uh, flexible um, um, uh, element uh, consideration, I think is quite lacking uh, yeah, in our thought process. And then another thing is our planning process, right? We, we, like, we don't have a so-called public consultation. That's what we don't have in Malaysia. Yeah, the most is maybe perhaps it's between, you know, association and whatever, you know. They can't, if, if let's say association is driving certain issue, yeah to the interest of the architect, yeah. So I, I, I don't know, so for me it's like, you know, but individually, you know, uh, if let's say you let an architect to dry this, right, it's a big education process, yeah, to convince, especially social housing, right, that is usually come from the authority, yeah. So that is really a challenge, yeah. It means that the whole system, you know, mindset change, yeah, whole system process change. Yeah, but I believe it's the same thing, you know, you can do it from the median cost. Yeah, median cost apartment is driven by the the dev, uh, the, the private developer. Sure can do something on yeah. The press can do something for you. And I, to be frank, I have seen, you know, uh, some of the quite creative architects, you know, uh, uh, during my times uh, about 20 years ago, you know, people start to use the uh, same blocks, whatever, you know, instead of everywhere you, you tar the road, yeah, you put the, uh, the, the tar road, you know, and then pave up everywhere. But of course, that is what usually Malaysian would like. Lah. But then, you know, when the landscape, you know, come into this one, a small, small little thing, it adds up, right? Uh, people can, can, you know, like, people can relate, people will behave, you know, relate to a place that, you know, people can appreciate better. I, and I, I believe people will, will have a sentiment towards that and willing, you know, more willing to take care of it, yeah. I think that's all for it. Uh, first of all, we'd like to thank you, Ms. Ang, for reserve your time for us today. And besides, I also like to thank you for everyone for joining us and also have, hope that everyone has joined today. Thank you very much and I wish you have a great rest of the day. Uh, thank you for your time. I think we had a quite a good discussion from 
social housing to Singapore uh, generally and even touch on the heritage part of the, uh, the Singapore heritage conservation versus Penang. So it's quite good. I think a good dialogue. And I think I'm sure the students will benefit from it very much from this uh, today's dialogue. Thank you very much, Jojo. Take care, must yeah. have fun, Thank you know. You. Enjoy your fun, you know. <laughs> sure, Thank sure. You. Bye. Bye, sir. Thank you, everyone, Thank you. and have a good rest and good night. Thank you. Bye.